Uh, so I'm going to call the meeting to order. And so the first thing I'm going to do is ask uh, the counselors who are with us remotely to introduce themselves. Uh, Lauren, would you go ahead first? Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, we're getting, except for Jack, could you mute your things? Okay. Okay, you should be able to speak now, Lauren. There we go. Uh, Lauren Hurl, uh, City Councilor from District 1. Great. And Jennifer. Hi, Jennifer Morton, District. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, all right. <clears throat> so just to, uh, let's see, is there, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to speak a little bit more. Check, check, check. One, two. Are we good? Okay. There's a little bit of an echo. Do you hear That's that? I checked. Check. I did. Yeah. You got to make sure you're actually muting the whole computer. I don't know how I your sound on the computer. I've hit my sound. How about this one? Yeah, I. Yeah, I mm. You're. Your laptop is picking up your vocals. Oh, and it's also like I can hear myself coming out of your computer. I know, but no. Donna's laptop is not muted. I can see it on my screen. Yeah. Well, that says it's off. Check, check, check. One, two. Hello, hello. Check, check, check. I think I think we're good now. Oh. Oh yeah, no, that's probably true. Yeah. Yeah. No, I just mean she doesn't have on on mute. To speak. That's right. That's right. Yep. Yep. That's right. Okay. I think we're good now. That's okay. All right. So to uh, just um, introduce some of the expectations. Um, so if you're joining us remotely, if you would change your name to be your first and last name um, so I can address you properly, that'd be great. Um, when you speak, if you could start with your name and say where you live, um, we ask that you keep your comments to two minutes um, or less. And um, and Donna, you're going to help us out with that, letting folks know sort of where we're at with that. Um, and then if you have an, uh, something to say about a agenda item, uh, you can make that comment um, as we get towards that item in the agenda. If you have something to talk about that's not on our agenda, that's for general business and appearances. Um, and just make sure that you're recognized by me to speak. Um, we don't generally get into like back and forths. Um, so try to keep your comments sort of um, all together and uh, yeah, keep it germane to the topic. All right. I think that is it. Um, just in terms of reviewing and approving the agenda, I don't have any information to um, change any of the agenda items or orders. Um, does anyone else have information about changing the agenda? Okay, so with that, we'll consider the agenda approved and we're gonna move on to uh, general business and appearances. So this is an opportunity for any member of the public to address the council on any topic that is otherwise not on our agenda. Um, and we'll start with folks who are with us in person. Would anyone like to make a comment? Okay. <clears throat> yeah, um, we could, let me just think about where it makes sense to move that. <laughs> um, one thought, so I, I expect that we will go into executive session and that is a part of a few executive sessions. So one thing that we could do is if you would like to make any comments, we could just take your comments early. Would that be useful? Okay, let's plan to do that. Okay. Um, 
actually, if you, uh, how would you feel about making your comments during general business and appearances? Would that be acceptable? Do, so during this time, like right now? Okay, great. Um, great. Yeah. Um, just so I know, anyone else, uh, just so we, we know, anyone else wish to make a comment during general business and appearances? It's in, in person. Okay. All right. So now, now is an okay time if you would, if you'd like to. Fair enough. Um, yep. Cameron is going to, yes, actually that would probably be the easiest. Yeah. No worries. I wrote this down. So. Oh, you're so good. Good evening. My name is Thomas Mulholland. Um, good evening. My name is Thomas Mulholland. I live in the lane shops here in Montpelier. Um, I was very recently appointed to the Montpelier Public Art Commission. I have yet to attend the meeting in my official capacity as a commission member. However, I did attend a meeting on the 22nd of July as an interested member <laughs> of the community. It is this meeting that has resulted in agenda item number 13. <clears throat> I spoke Um, I spoke oh, I spoke with the chairperson of the Art Commission, Ward Joyce, this afternoon and was astounded by what he told me. He said that there was a request before the city council to have my appointment rescinded. He said that this was because some members of the commission felt threatened and unsafe by me, that I had made offensive remarks, and that I was sexist. He advised me to quietly agree to yield. Otherwise, he said things could get messy. Everyone could be dragged through the mud. Presently, I am the only one who has mud on them. I have no intention of turning this meeting into some sort of tribunal. I simply want to ask the city council if they can take action to rescind my appointment based upon anonymous character assassination. I would like to further point out that my only appearance before the commission was as a member of the public. I was outside the circle, so to speak, and as such was free to express contrary views. I realize that being a commission member necessitates a cooperative spirit, which I do embrace. Finally, I feel ambushed. I was informed of this agenda item six hours prior to the city council meeting. I should like to know how the art commission members discussed this issue um, at the last commission meeting via emails or both. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. And, and we'll, we'll follow up on, on all of that. So thank you. Um, I mean, we, we've got to go into executive session, et cetera. So, oh, we've got to go into executive session when it comes up, but thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, should I wait or should I leave? Or well, I, we won't be discussing it for a while. Right. Exactly. Okay. I can, I can answer one of your questions, I believe. Sorry? I can answer one of your questions, I believe. Uh, it's my understanding that the commission as a group has never discussed this, that, that we received a request from a couple of individual members asking that this be considered. So, so an email then. just... Well, yeah, uh, okay. but no, no, to my knowledge, no meeting and the city council has not discussed this yet. So uh, they have no, there's no direction. This is their first time considering it. Who was it that actually requested the this as an agenda item? It came from the, the chair. From Ward Joyce. Okay. Yes. All right. Thank you. Um, anyone else who's with us in person wish to make a comment? Okay, great. And so we'll go to folks who are with us uh, virtually. Anyone with us online wish to make a comment? Okay, I'm not seeing anyone. You can uh, raise your hand using the raise hand icon under reactions, uh, or you can turn your video camera on and just wave, or you can just turn your mic on and let us know. Okay, I'm not seeing anyone, so we're going to keep going. Um, all right, so on to the consent agenda. 
Uh, is there a motion, Jack? Set agenda. Further discussion? Okay, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, great. So it is uh, unanimous. So we don't need to do roll call uh, so that the consent agenda passes. Um, so thank you uh, for that. Um, so we're going to go on to uh, committee appointments uh, for the Conservation Commission. Um, is I don't see Phyllis Rubenstein on or Sienna uh, Tunai. I apologize if I'm mispronouncing your name, um, nor in person, right? So um, just checking though, are is any of those folks here? Okay. Um, is there a motion regarding appointing Phyllis Rubenstein, Rubenstein and uh, Sienna uh, Tunai, um, I, I apologize, um, to, or, or would you like to go into executive session? Either way. I make a motion to appoint these to the commission. I'll second that. Okay, further discussion? Okay, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, great. So that is all. Oh, and opposed. Anyone opposed? Okay, so that is unanimous. So um, thank you, Phyllis and Sienna. We are grateful for your um, stepping up. Uh, so on to the homelessness task force uh, membership. Um, would would you like? Yes, go ahead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Um, the Homelessness Task Force has been meeting pretty regularly now for three years and uh, has still pretty much got the, the initial appointees working on it and has run into some issues with quorum. Um, we met today, actually, and had seven of the nine, so that was great. That's been a high. Uh, usually it's five and often four, which is not a quorum. Uh, and so at the, the prior week's scheduled meeting on, on September 7th, there were only four people. So they asked if the council could consider re-advertising for more interest. Um, and part of it is there are there are two council reps, and, and Council Member Morton has been pretty clear that she can't attend because of work conflict. Uh, so, and, and, you know, Council Member Casey has been attending as, as he can. Um, and the police department has had a representative and given their staffing, they just haven't been able to attend. So part of it was, you know, to give the chance for those a, a current members to re-up if they choose, see if there's more interest. We certainly have had a couple of members of the community that have been very regular attendees and actually active participation, participants in the, the conversation who I think may wish to, to actually join the task force. I don't want to speak for them, but it would I would think they are they would. And um, so I think the question was, would the council be okay with us re-advertising and also revisiting uh, whether they want a council rep? And if they do, who who would it be and can they attend? So that was kind of the range of questions, a lot of questions. that I was asked to share with the council. Uh, Jack. Thanks. <laughs> when I saw this on the agenda, my initial reaction was that this is pretty uncontroversial and we could probably have put it on the consent agenda, but I think to get as many people who are viewing as possible to be aware of that, I, I decided not to request that. I think this is a good idea. I think that uh, it's it's been a big commitment for people to be on for so long and they meet with uh, more frequently than almost any other uh, commission that we have, I think. And so so people put in a lot of work on it, which I praise them for. But I'm sure there are other people in the community who are probably interested. And um, and so I would encourage people. I, to, I would I think you should put it out put it out to recruit more members. And I would encourage people to volunteer. Um, the other thing that I thought of that uh, has come up in the context of the uh, 
housing committee that was recently formed is that uh, we've created some committees, the Homelessness Task Force is one, the Housing Committee is another one that don't have designated uh, terms for members. And, uh, and I just think in general, it, it's probably a good practice for us to start uh, designating terms whenever we appoint, appoint people, because I think people don't don't want to quit if they if they think they're uh, they're kind of a, a permanent <laughs> appointment, <laughs> e even if they really think it's it's time for them to get off. And so that kind of structure is something I think we should keep in mind as we uh, as we proceed. So I don't think we need a motion, but I think I think manager should do it. Yeah, um, Connor, and then did you have your hand up? So then we'll go Donna. Yep. So I, I agree with everything Jack has said. And, you know, if you look at our strategic planning exercises, homelessness was near the top, like I think three or four different categories here. Uh, it's a, it's an issue that's uh, not getting better. I think like today we heard some numbers that suggest it's uh, becoming a much bigger problem in our community and will continue to do so with some of the uh, state cutbacks there. Uh, so this committee, I think like, while unwieldy sometimes, maybe with the, the membership there, it's, it's been quite effective as far as uh, recommending budget items, as far as the voucher program, uh, the liaison position and many other items that we have adopted here. Uh, so we, we want a good partnership and we want them to be effective and, and meeting the quorum there. Uh, along the same lines, we had a discussion today, and uh, maybe we could kind of couple it into this, but, you know, the Public Restroom Committee ha hasn't met in uh, over a year since it's been established here, and uh, there was pretty clear sense from the committee that, um, you know, I, I said, I like, one worry I had, and I'll just put it out there, was I was worried that it would be a bit duplicative of the Homelessness Task Force, because so many of the issues, like, are intertwined. Peter Kelman, I'm glad he's on there. Uh, he very much disagreed with that, and as I think about it, I, I completely agree with Peter. It, it's a uh, it's a, it's an issue that goes beyond homelessness, and uh, we do have the sort of crew that we appointed over a year ago. But maybe we could extend the same uh, uh, offer out to see if there are new members who would want to step up on that committee, who could entail that could entail like you know people from state government, I think the business community, and have wide representation. So. Uh, I think we do have some things that, like, we have the RFP out for maybe a warming shelter um, and other services that we're, we're, we're currently, you know, we're going to be waiting a bit for results on. Uh, but I don't know if we need to wait any longer on that. Uh, I think at, at the point that it comes, we can incorporate those ideas. Uh, so we'd like to see that as well anyways. So just throwing that out there. So, sorry, I just want to make sure I'm clear. So potentially also re-advertising for so. the um, public restroom committee. Yeah, but I'll, I'll volunteer to, uh, you know, I, I think I am on the committee, but if we want to do in the next couple of weeks and put an email out, just to have an initial meeting, I'd be happy to okay, so, help organize that. Stuff. Okay, so so not re-advertising for it, just actually meeting. Where are we re-advertising? You know, I, I'd have to look at what the composition is now, right? Because I imagine people like, how to be like, I, I forgot I applied for the bloody thing you know, <laughs> over a year. So uh, maybe we could just do some individual outreach to the people we did appoint, make sure they're still on board, and then re-advertise. Okay. Um, I think it'd be important. Okay. Fair enough. Um, Don. Well, I, I think it needs a bigger discussion. I'm still interested in the pilot community and having the community room and having bathrooms. And unfortunately, the company called Pilot doesn't sell it separately, but I, I would like us to put it on the agenda and, and assign a task force to follow that through. We set aside some money and we still need bathrooms that have sinks, showers, and toilets, and we still need a community gathering room. So I'd like to, we put some money aside to do that. And I, anyway, I would like to put that back on the agenda at some point and really have a task force focus on it. Do you... But for this thing, I guess bring us back to what we're yeah. supposed to be talking yeah. about yeah. here. Um, I do wonder about maybe it's my misunderstanding of a quorum. If Jennifer can't make the meetings, and I would assume she's no longer on the committee, so it has a vacancy. And then does the count not change? Well, I think that's where 
you know, we're looking to reconstitute the, the group. And I, I think many of the members want to continue. I think they were just hoping to, you know, perhaps if someone wishes to step down, they could, but also to see if there's new interest. And as I said, we've got a couple of real regular attendees uh, who are very active participants who may well wish to be uh, on the committee. I don't know if they do. And, and so I think just the question was, do we, is there still an active council interest and can we re-advertise? So we have a full committee, so we have a, at least a reliable quorum. Uh, it, you know, it, it is hit or miss as we're trying to get business done. Uh, we end up having usually a conversation anyway, but it's, you know, it's not official, so. Issue of quorum is, my understanding was when you had vacancies, then the quorum well, changed. Real. Okay, okay, so, that's good so to know. So it's a nine-person committee. Yep. It's still, it's kind of like if somebody's not here at a council meeting, it still requires four votes. And you can't do any official business. You can't vote on things right, um, if you let you don't have the quorum. No. Um, Peter. Uh, I Yeah, I, I would just like to add some things to what Jack suggested um, about, about uh, designated terms. You know, uh, I've been a pretty close observer and a, a member of, I was a member of the housing task force, went to a lot of their meetings after I was no longer a member. I've gone to a lot of the, homelessness task force meetings, and I've seen the same four problems. And I'm gonna propose some solutions. Quorum, work between meetings. These groups tend to be, uh, have institutional members, people who do that work every day. It's too much to expect them to also do extra work between meetings. Third, and related to that, burnout. I've seen the chairs of these, of these task forces and others really burn out. And then fourth, there's an occasional appearance of a conflict of interest because these task forces tend to be mostly institutional members. So I'd like to suggest four things to add to Jack's uh, uh, term limits <laughs> um, or, or setting a term. The first is to really make an effort to appoint a number of highly engaged, unaffiliated members who have the time and the emotional energy to put in work between meetings. It really is too much to expect uh, somebody who works with homelessness every day, and it's a very hard job, to also put in the additional time between meetings. Secondly, that all voting members and alternates, and I really, urge you to appoint alternates, um, because that can help with the, the quorum issue, but that, uh, that all uh, members and alternates be ap appointed based on the strength of their applications, which may or may not include an, uh, uh, an affiliation, but don't make the appointment by affiliation. Don't say the police department or uh, another way. You'll get them, but the, uh, number two. So number two is to appoint people based on th their application. Third, I don't think there should be more than one voting member at a time from a single organization. That, however, if that organization has an alternate, and the police is a very good ex good good example. When one of the police people can't be there, now this isn't true right now. The other one can make it. So one could be the member, the other could be the alternate, so that you always have a, a person from that organization. Right now, you have two people from another way, you have two people from Good Sam, you have two people from the police, you have two uh, city council members. That's, that's not really a representative group. So I would really suggest no more than one voting member from each institution. And finally, I really would suggest that the city council members be liaisons, not voting members. First of all, it's redundant for them to be voting members. And secondly, it adds the quorum problem. Jennifer could have continued, it, but she recognized that she couldn't make those meetings and so needed to uh, resign be, because she was you know, causing a quorum problem. But it would be great to have her back on the committee if she, didn't, if she wasn't creating a quorum problem. So I really see, please ask you to consider those four elements that I just mentioned. If you don't remember what they are, I can send a, an email. Thank you. Thank you.
Oh, I'm yes. Anyway, okay. Thank you. Um, any other thoughts from folks in person or with us virtually on um, on this? All right, so I want to go through the questions kind of specifically because there's there's a, some um, some pretty specific questions I think we need to answer. So um, this is not a vote, just a straw poll. Um, how are you feeling about um, opening up the committee for some new appointments? Okay, and let me just check online. Okay, yep. Okay, and. Um, how do you feel about adding alternates? Okay, and sorry, let me just check online one more time. Okay, great, okay. Um, <clears throat> at how do you feel about, um, well, this is a separate question. So uh, Jennifer, I assume that you're you're stepping down from the homelessness task force, is, is that correct? Correct. My okay. job with the CJC requires me to. Yeah, that's fine. Um, and Connor, you're interested in staying on? Okay. And so is we, we don't necessarily need two people um, from the council. Um, I what happened is we, so I think what happened was um, prior to Council Member Morton's taking a new position, she was interested in being on the group. We had a shortage of members. And so we said, why, if we have two council members who can make it and are interested, why not have them both? Because council member Casey's been on, I think, since almost since the beginning. Mm -hmm. and I might begin ahead of you there. I don't necessarily disagree with Peter that I don't know if I need to vote on it. It's um, sometimes it feels like I'm writing a letter to myself since most of the motions are directed at the council. So uh, yeah. I, I don't know if that's a bad thing. It's no, that's fair. I mean, uh, I don't. Think, so I, I regularly go to the energy committee meetings and I'm not a voting member yeah. on that committee. Um, Lauren, are you a voting member? You're not a voting member on the energy committee right now. Okay. Um, so that's, that's fair. Um, and where, where else are, are we? What other thing? Oh, so um, the membership. Uh, oh, terms. Um, let's do that one in a second. So with the membership, if we're opening up re-advertising, did we want to designate I sort of assume that we don't want to designate any seats for any particular organizations. Like it's just, we're going to open it up like any other committee and invite people to apply and we'll see who we get. Right. Is that I'm seeing a lot of nods there. So that, I think that answers that question. Um, term limits or not limits um, terms. Sorry. Uh, I would suggest two years because that's pretty common for some other committees. Um, uh, Lauren and Jennifer, how do you feel at two years? Okay. And I would say if you're going to do that, when when we appoint this committee, mm -hmm. when we get the applications and, you know, point half of them for one year and half of them for two years mm -hmm. so that we're all alternating mm -hmm. and um, for initially, and then okay. that would be how that would go. It also seems like we should probably check in with everybody to see if they're willing to step to to stay on or if they prefer to step off or whatever. Um, okay, I think that is all of the questions that we needed answers to. Lauren, go ahead. Just a quick thought in the advertising. I know we haven't yet kind of put into practice the stipends, this committee in particular, just making sure that that is part of the advertisement as it goes out, that that's available um, for mm -hmm. people participating would be great. That's a great call. Okay, I think that's it. Uh, would it be useful to you to have a motion with all of those things? Sure. Okay. Sure. <laughs> Is there a motion to what? How should we call that? We're good writing down all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to advertise it and have a limit of two years. The first year, half are going to have one year terms, half are going to have two year terms. And they're going to have alternates. Yeah. Decide. Depending on the number of applications, you can decide at the time whether to make a council rep a voting rep or not. Yes, because you always look at the diversity when and, you get new applications. So yeah. I think it's it's really just those. Did I cover it, John? And I think in terms of the 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 fairly legitimate question about 
multiple people from the same organization, you might want to wait and see how many applicants you get. Because if you, you know, yeah. some of the people that are multiple members are also the most active mm. and productive members. So, um, you okay. know, it might be. We'll, we'll just, we'll see. I think it's better not to set it in stone and you can act when you have an opportunity to reappoint. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, was that a motion? That was a motion. You've got it. Uh, uh, there's a second. Um, Jack. Uh, okay. And further discussion. No further discussion. Okay. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. And opposed. Okay. So that motion passes unanimously. So we don't need to do roll call. Um, thank you, everybody, for your thoughts and clarity around that. Yes, Donna. I'm sorry. The one we're talking about. Oh, yes. Yes. Conservation. Oh, sorry. I thought you were talking about conservation committee. Okay. Um, their terms are all over the place. And I'd like us to see we were, we were trying when we started appointments to put them back in order. So it's like they're all due in one month and they have some sense to their flow. When somebody's appointed in midterm, they only serve what's left. They don't start a new date. I'm sorry. I missed it when we were talking about that. Committee. No, it's okay. You know, oops, do you have something? Not on any of that. I just had a suggestion. Okay. Once we're done, you press. Uh, before we leave that, I mean, the, so there were two seats on the Conservation Commission. One was a four-year seat and one was a two-year seat. And we didn't specify necessarily who was getting what seat. There's also a couple alternate seats on the Conservation Commission. Do we want to revisit that? Well, Talk to your parliamentarian. We could move to reopen that. Just to clarify it. Yeah. Maybe you should. Take the motion to sign this one so much time and this one so much time. Yeah. Without reopening it. Mm -hmm. Whatever. Make a motion to appoint <laughs> Phyllis four years. Sure. Yeah, I move to appoint Phyllis Rubenstein for four years and uh, Sienna two and I for uh, two. Or tiny eye, whatever it is, for two years. Doesn't matter. One of us is the motion, one of us is the second. Oh, so you're seconding? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, great. Further discussion about that. Okay. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. And opposed? All right. So that passes unanimously. Uh, thank you for that clarity. Okay, yes. One person here for item 10. And I think it should be a pretty quick item. So you may want to, if you have. Oh, one. sure. Yeah, okay. Um, I also know we have someone here for item eight. Well, I don't. <laughs> okay. Conversation, potentially. Okay, then that's probably fair. I do anticipate that 10 will be fast. Um, okay, well, let's, we'll do 10. Um, yeah, that's, that's fine. Let's, let's, uh, let's do that. So let's take up. Item 10, hunting at 203 Country Club Road. Um, do you want to talk about the staff recommendation? or? Okay. Yeah, so at our, at our last meeting, a uh, gentleman from the public raised the question of hunting at the former Elks Club. We took a long look at that with staff and realized, uh, you know, there, there were a lot of issues, and particularly in the future as things become more expanded. But at the time, the use is still pretty limited, and our staff recommendation was to simply maintain the status quo for this season and uh you know i think probably revisited each season depending on the, the status of use but at this point we didn't really see a conflict with what's happening there now as opposed to, you know in the same light of it's what had happened there in the, in the past because there have been trail use and skiing use and those kinds of things recording in progress so. all right um Thoughts. Which, Matt, would Martin. you like to come comment on that? Yeah, sure. please do. Um, Maurice Martin, Scribner Street. Yo. Um, first of all, thank you for using the term gentleman. Yeah. I don't hear that too <laughs> often. <laughs> but thank you for, for that. However, I have spoken to the Washington County um, Fish and Game Warden and I'm kind of torn between this because I think it should be hunting with permission. 
so that you know we know who's on the property. But there's a difference between a hunter and a sportsman and a sportswoman. First of all, a hunter just goes on the property. A sportsman and a sportswoman ask permission first. Legal stands and they're identified with name, address, and telephone number by state law. A sportsman or sportswoman picks up garbage and trash that they find in the woods. A lot of hunters leave it. And it's a beautiful piece of property, and there's a lot of game there. And I'd love to keep it open, but at the same time, you want to know who's on that property, both for damage, for trash, illegal poaching, et cetera. I know of three stands there that are illegal. Um, and I spoke to the warden about that, and he's there. Well, I'll make my appearance after season starts because that's when the penalty is really enforceable because they can leave a stand up for a year if you don't know it's there. And when you've got a sports person or sportsman or sportswoman on the property, they see these things and I just feel that even if, you know, posting it with, with permission available or, you know, ask for permission first, and I don't even put up the signs for us, but it's just that, you know, hunters have got a terrible reputation. Sportsmen and sportswomen don't. And that's what I've taught to my family and to people I hunt with. And I really want us to make this, this could be a really great, teaching environment for the rec department for generations to come. And it's just something that I think that our property as a city should be used just as, you know, down at uh, near the pool, et cetera. You know, this is a teaching opportunity for everyone to really take care of the property, the land, appreciate it. I mean, I've seen, Coyote puppies wrestling. You don't see that on TV. I mean, I've seen turkey chicks that were maybe two hours old. That's what a sportsman or sportswoman does in the woods. I've never had a bad day in the woods. Even falling down on my face, tripping. You just look up at the sky and laugh at yourself. But we've got a great opportunity to use this property properly for future generations. And, and that's what I want to say. And thank you for allowing the hunting to continue. Um, we haven't yet. <laughs> I hope you do. But I, I'm just saying it's a great asset. And to be able to offer that to somebody in 20 years because it's taken care of properly, that's important to me as, as a, an outdoors person. And, and it means a lot to me. And um, I mean, I've seen tree stands hurt a tree if they're not used properly. I mean, putting bolts into a tree to put a tree stand up is not respecting a living thing. And I know I'm going over, but <laughs> I've seen some things in the woods that most people laugh at me. I say, you have no idea how, how much I can sit and laugh on the ground watching chipmunks run across my legs. So there you go. Thank you. Oh, uh, yeah, I guess there's a question here for me. Well, doing that, I, I just want to add that we spent a lot of time talking about those situations. And um, and I think it's probably maybe worth some consideration. One of the issues that we as staff had was what the criteria would be in issuing permission for a publicly owned parcel. You know, if I'm a private landowner, I can say, Maurice, you can hunt and Tom, you can hunt. But you know, Jack, you can't because it's my land and I can just decide. And as a, as a public entity, you know, it's a little bit different. We don't necessarily have the, the personnel to, you know, be up there monitoring and, and doing, you know, the kind of things. And so we can have a registration system and what's the criteria. So um, we, we basically realized we didn't have, we either had to say no or see how it goes and reevaluate. Uh, and then either come back with recommendations that we we do something differently or 
you know, as the property builds out, then maybe now it's not time for hunting there anymore. So, um, so, so that's where we ended up where it was. You don't, so so um, it, it couldn't, um, do you think it would require much staff time if it was, you know, we're, we're just going to say yes to folks, but you just got to tell us or like sure, there's, there's not. So, so I don't think that's too much time. Okay. I think the time is then who's going up there to make sure that, that's, that the only people yeah. that are there are those that, that are ask permission and who's enforcing. Yeah. And, you know, we talked about, you know, people, we could monitor the cars in the parking lot, but so, or yeah. there was at one point we talked about limiting the number of people that could be in at any one time. Mm -hmm. And again, it was sort of, how do you do that? Mm -hmm. um, and if certainly if the council would like us to look at those management strategies, we'd be happy to take a look at it. Um, just know that at least for this year, at this point in time, we don't feel we have the okay. capacity to handle that. So we looked at it as, you know, a little bit of an all or nothing and given where we're at uh, and given how much the, the sports people do enjoy it there, um, we felt it was worth at least one more year and seeing what we learned. Okay. Um, Donna, and then I, I want to give you an, a, a chance, um, Mr. Martineau, if you want to respond to any of it, but um, only because I'm inviting you back up, but um, Donna, go ahead. First, I wanted to apologize. I got so involved in your talking, I didn't t time you right away. So you've got like four minutes <laughs> and then you got an, a, an abrupt stop sign. So uh, I, yeah, no, but I didn't give you the warning, Orange. I apologize. But along those lines, before you talked about wanting us just to stay where we were, and it sounds like the game warden currently is doing some monitoring there, but nobody was giving permission before, were they? Were they? The private owner was giving permission before. Interesting. Mm. Okay. Oh, okay. But the game warden still, be, private or public, they still roam those areas and enforce the state laws. Thank you. Uh, Carrie, did you have, yeah, go ahead. Um, yeah, I, it, you, you brought up very interesting questions and um, hunting is not something or that I know a lot about or being a sports person is not something I know a lot about. And it seems like um, it, the city staff has done a lot of consideration on this and has some questions that were not easily resolved. And so I would be in favor of just keeping it open for now, following the recommendation that has come from staff. And then as part of the process that we're going through in the next couple of years of figuring out what we're doing with that property, I think this needs to be in that discussion. And um, and I think that we'll be able to give it the real the consideration and the time that it deserves, and that we can come back and decide what to do. Um, if you would like to come speak to this, that, that now would be great. And then if if you have anything else further, yeah, go ahead. Uh, my name is Walt Goodwin. I was uh, born and brought up in Montpelier, but I live in Berlin now. Um, I've hunted at the uh, Elk Club property pretty much since I was a kid. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm really glad you're saying to keep it open. Well, you're thinking about keeping it open anyways. But, right up the please, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a quiet talker. But is that better? Yeah. No? Yeah, it is better. Um, so anyway, so currently uh, I have a tree stand up there, and I left it up from last year. And I've gotten permission to hunt there before from Liberini. He was a pro shop guy in a, in a golf course there. And uh, and now that he's gone, that's why I came down tonight, just to make sure I can still go there. Is it still going to be okay this year if I have a tree stand there? Because you have to have uh, permission to have a tree stand on, on property. It's a it's a interesting game law. So much like Council Member Brown, we are not experts at this. Although we did, uh, I will uh, be clear that a couple of the people at staff that were involved in this are very avid sports people and do know, like Arnie, like Arnie, yes, <laughs> specifically that's Arnie. That's right. And uh, so we do have some expertise uh, at the table, uh, and I think our goal, um, as best we can, is to was to allow what has happened there in the past to continue to happen. So if people had tree stands, they could keep their tree stands and, and need to not change anything to the extent that we can. We're not a private landowner. So we we do have some, you know, issues right. to consider that a private landowner 
doesn't you know have to um, but our goal was to try to make it as as comparable to what it was and if it turns out that it doesn't if it if you know and, and i i expect uh M mr martineau is very willing to share his feelings with our council um which we appreciate and if things are not working i i have no doubt that he'll tell us um and i you know i count on those of you that have been responsible users of that property if it gets too crowded or whatever that you will let us know and maybe give us some advice as to what could change because we we want it to be safe and we want it to be responsible and we want the land honored yeah i thought i was the only hunter in there until i met maurice in there last year <laughs> we came across each other yeah. um i wanted to just specify that my tree stands legal has my name on it which is which you have to have and it's a ladder stand so there's no nails or anything mm -hmm. no ruining of any trees at all so when I take it out of there, there's no damage. So, Thank so you. okay. So I can hunt there this year. Yes. Perfect. Thank Great. you. Thank you. Um, uh, I'm gonna go to Peter and um and then if we'll, we'll come back to you. Yeah, go ahead, Peter. I uh, um not that I know a whole lot about hunting, but <clears throat> seems like this would be a great opportunity for community engagement and um I mean as as the other things develop up on the former Elks Club property to have a, a like a committee like the Complete Streets Committee or like the trash tramps from, uh, uh, but to, to get some citizens who are knowledgeable about hunting to help to uh, sort of police this, or at least maybe police isn't quite the right word, but you get my meaning, right? Yeah, great, thank you. Uh, uh, Mr. Martin, would you like to um, just ad address anything further? <laughs> he and I, we met in the woods. So last year, and he was even nice to say, hey, when I'm not using my stand, you can too. Well, that makes me feel weird. But anyways, <laughs> no, it's just the best thing about being in the woods is not seeing another hunter. And when you've got too many people on a parcel of land, you're destroying the whole thing of hunting, of being there and intruding on animals, normal day to day and night life. And that's why, you know, I know where his stand is. I'm going to stay away from it because I don't want to go over there and spook anything that might be coming his way and vice versa, because I told him where I usually hunt. And that's why I think going forward, you're going to want to say, okay, we're only going to have eight at any time on this property, you know, at least speak to someone that knows a warden, you know, how many should you allow on a parcel of land this size? Because there's nothing worse than to have your stand or have your spot and somebody comes and sits 30 yards away from you. I mean, that's, that's an unwritten no, no. And that's, that's basically it. And so that's why I stay away from his stand and he knows your eye hunt. And that's why I just wanted to continue. That's all. Thank you. I also just want to encourage uh, both of you to participate in the uh, discussion about uh, what will happen up there. We we hired a firm that's going to um, lead a, a public uh, conversation or uh, in input process for what should happen uh, on that land. And I don't recall anybody um, really advocating for hunting specifically or uh, being a sports person on that space. So uh, I guess I would encourage you to to advocate for that in that process um, so that, yeah, there's a, a voice for that uh, use of the land. Um, thank you. A any other thoughts on this? Connor, go ahead. I, I just pretty much agree with Carrie here. Mm -hmm. I have no desire to take away the status quo, especially if it's an asset for people currently. I think things could change in the future with the public plan, but like the mayor said, you know, yeah, better be at the table than on the menu there. So yeah, please show up and participate. Yes. Um, <laughs> but um, no, no, I, I, I think uh, I, I'd be fine with keeping it as it is. And I think state law does actually limit how much we can regulate hunting here with the, some of the preemption law. So, uh, okay. Well, uh, is there a motion that folks would like to make? I'll yeah, go ahead. I'll move to uh, adopt option one as recommended by city staff. I'll Which second. Okay, great. Um, so 
we have multiple seconds. Uh, so just to be clear, option one is no changes from current use. Uh, and any further discussion? Okay, uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed? Okay, so the motion uh, carries, it's unanimous. We don't need to do roll call. Um, so thank you uh, for participating in that. And all right, so we are, I think we're ready now to move on to the um, the Parklet ordinance. So um, this is gonna be the first reading for uh, this ordinance change. So I'm, I'm gonna officially open the public hearing um, for that and uh, so, yeah, um, there are members of the public who would like to speak about this. Now would be a great uh, opportunity. Great. Thank you. Am I am I in this thing? I can't. Yes. Yeah. Um, awesome. I I think the ordinance as it's written, as I saw it, is fantastic. I know it. Wes, could you identify yourself? Oh, oh I am so sorry. I'm Wes Hamilton. Um, I am wearing my hat as the owner of Three Penny Tap Room. Um, uh, I, I appreciate all the hard work that has gone into creating the ordinance as proposed. I wanted to come and speak. Um, I have pretty significant and deep felt concerns specifically about, um, the portion, if I'm understanding correctly, in which parklets would be required to be open and free use to the public when not being used by the business. Um, I have way more than two minutes of talking, as Anne could tell you from my email, um, about concerns with that. Um, and I'm happy to like enumerate concerns, but you know, I, I kind of, I, I imagine, you know, to try to keep within two minutes, I imagine the intentions and the thinking um, that put that in place is incredibly well-meaning um from my perspective you know our parklet which is a vital part of our business at this point cost us closer to thirty thousand dollars than twenty thousand dollars to create um so the idea of it being a free-for-all to anybody um is obviously concerning um you know damage or graffiti and this and that um you know the thing that i think like more kind of uh, philosophically to me, um, you know, I'm free, we're all free to park our cars in downtown. Um, and after the meters are no longer running, we can leave our cars there overnight. Um, we are not required to make our cars available to the public to use because that doesn't make sense. Um, so I don't really understand the difference between my car and the parklet in that parking space at 2 a.m. Thank you. Uh, so also, I just um, I, I hope it's OK with you. I just forwarded your email to the council so that they could have yeah, have I that. I, I should have. Yeah, I should have forwarded it sooner. But there we are. Um, I so I'll just say I think that's a good point. You know, we don't allow people to access our cars if they're there after hours um I, i'm i'll just say i like i think it's all right to um not require uh access to the public after hours for parklets i realize that would be a change from what we had as policy previously but that's that's where i'm at anywhere anyway um so any well so just to check any other comments in person or virtually on this I probably should have saved my opining till after I asked. Um, Matt, yes, if I could, I just may, um, from the staff perspective of from drafting this, we don't have a strong feeling one way or the other about this. We were trying to respect. So the initial policy, as the mayor said, when this was done, was that those would be open. When we went to the temporary ordinance, we did away with that for COVID reasons and everything else. So our, our goal in um, drafting the ordinance was to reflect the original um primary ordinance uh, but i don't know that there's i mean that was that was a, initiated by the then council said this is something we want so it's from from our perspective it's strictly a policy call that you make and um whichever you do that's fine with us 
other thoughts? Donna, go ahead. Public meeting, public hearing. So is the is, is yeah. it our turn to talk? <laughs> yeah. I guess it's I'm kind of mixing it, but um let me just check. Uh, anyone else online wish to make a comment about this or in person? Uh, you can use your raise hand icon under reactions. You can turn your camera on and wave. You can use, uh, you can just turn your mic on. Um, I am not seeing anyone. So um, I'm going to close the public hearing then. Uh, go ahead, Donna. Well, I really hear your point and wondered if we could change the wording from required to encourage the availability for public seating. There are some that don't have loose chairs that really work well, but I would like to see maybe that change in the language. So speaking of language, the part that I am tuned into on that is section 20-7 uh, part C, which says all parklets shall include signage which indicates the hours of, of private operation and states that the parklet is open to the public at other times. So, I mean, I would suggest just removing C. Yeah, that's an easy way to do it. But Unless, I guess I still would like some language encouraging uh, possible public use if the, if the if facility allows. See where that might fit. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, I think in that same section, B um, also says that Oh, oh, yes. Parklets are yeah. only restricted to patrons during business hours. And other than that, they're open to the general public. Um, and I, you know, I, I would love to live in a world where um, they were all open to the public when the business was closed and, um, and, we, and the businesses didn't have to worry about their property being damaged or destroyed. Um, so I, I, sadly, I don't think we live in that world. Um, so I'd be in favor of changing that. And I like the idea of encouraging, including language that encourages, because some business owners may feel like they want to do that or give it a try. Uh, I, I feel like we could probably just, so in the spirit of that, um, oh, maybe, um, no, never mind, I'm wrong. So we should maybe strike B as well, though I, we could replace it potentially with something like we encourage parklet operators to make them available to the public after hours of operation. Um, it also means that in D, it says at all times that the parklet is in operation, smoking is prohibited, but I, unless we want to prohibit smoking there all the time, I, maybe that's too complicated. Um, Jack. I think that what we're seeing here is kind of a change in the vision of what a parklet was going to be from uh, from thinking the parklet's going to be a flat platform with maybe some benches to something that's a lot more than that now and i i totally agree that uh, businesses who have uh, have their fixtures and tables and chairs and all that stuff out there have a valid reason valid interest in in protecting those and so uh for that reason, I would make a motion with regard to uh, delete to strike uh, subsection C there, and in sub is in section twenty seven subsection B. Uh, delete the phrase, delete the words, and otherwise must be open to the general public for their enjoyment. And can you say that? Can you say that again? Sure. Actually, in subsection B, delete the word only in the, well, let me think about this for a minute, only yeah. in the first line. And so parklets may be restricted to use by patrons of a particular establishment or group of cooperating businesses during their operating hours. And then delete the rest of that sentence. So put a period after hours. Parklets may restrict. Parklets may be restricted to use by patrons of a particular establishment and so forth yep. during their operating hours, period. 
you got to go. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, Donna, go yeah, ahead. Because right after you drop the operating hours, so they can, but they're encouraged to make available when possible or feasible. Maybe that's feasible. Sorry. Yeah. I mean, we could. Interesting, I, interesting thought. I feel like we're on the same track here. This is also just the first reading. So we could, we could just, incur, you know, ask the city manager to capture this and re rewrite it in a, in a way that doesn't res restrict it. Though I, I realize I'm interrupting your motion. Okay. Um, does that we talk about this so much? I thought it's a second reading, even though it says first right in yeah, front of me. Right. <laughs> um, you, you don't need a motion necessarily from us on how, because you, you're hearing the direction our conversation's going. So manager to amend the ordinance as part of the discussion and bring it back for second reading. Is that a motion that someone would like to make? Yeah. I'll do it. Okay. You, you can have I'll make the motion. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what Bill said. And Jack, are you seconding? Um also oh uh, Connor, also I just wanted to check in. I want to make sure Lauren and Jennifer I don't know if you have anything else that you want that you want to say. I just wanted to make sure, like, just check in. Are you good? I'm good. I'm just having connection issues. I apologize. You're you're good. It's all it's all good. Uh, Connor, go ahead. Just a bit. I'm a wee bit conflicted on this one. You know, like we have a conversation about Garrett and Park. We don't like the bad behavior going on in Garrett and Park, so we stick in the garage. You know, it seems similar that you know if we don't like the behavior going on in Parklets, we take a I get it, but ex the existing uh, policy is people get to use it, right? We're taking that away with this. Um, so I, I think, you know, and Wes had a pretty good analogy tonight. I, I think that did stick with me with the cars and everything. I, I, I think I probably will vote for this, but I think we do need a bigger conversation. And it came up with the Homelessness Task Force today. Uh, like, wh what are we doing with Garden Park? You know, is, is, there, is there an alternative, you know? And there's going to be a proposal brought to us pretty soon. So I hope we consider that seriously and make sure people do have a place to go. If it's not a parklet and it's not Garden Park, I think it just needs to be at the forefront of our minds on this stuff. Oh, Jack. I have a question. Wes, you may have the answer, but you may not. The current language, is it creating any problems now? Are, are you, so Jack, Jack I, I may have the answer. Okay. Well, currently under, so the we had an existing sort of the base ordinance and it restricted the number of parking spaces and all those other things. We superseded that with a temporary ordinance, which we've used for the three, last three summers, including this one. The temporary ordinance doesn't require the public use. So Wes and others have not had to provide that. Um, so we are, the goal was to take the best parts of the temporary and the best parts of the original to allow for more expansive use of parklets, but also make sure that all the safety features and things were included. And the issue of use after hours is a policy question that um, is that you're debating. That's one Does of the that answer your question? people are using it now no, for the most part. Okay, I think that's true. For Okay, thanks. That's all I wanted to, Connor said we were taking it away and it hasn't been there for the last three years. So, but I do think it comes back to that point that we do yeah. need to look at community space and right. outside and inside for well, and a I variety think, of people. I think it's a good point. Um, and I, it makes me think about, you know, like, so if we're gonna have space available to anybody to use in, in after hours times, and I'd rather have it be our property rather than private property. Um, you know, or you and, know, and the benches downtown are available yeah. Yeah. twenty-four hours. Yeah, for the public. True. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, we have a motion in a second. Yes, we have not voted. Any further discussion? Uh, any further discussion? We're just checking online here. Okay. All right. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 
And opposed. Okay, um, so that passes. So we'll have a second reading at our next meeting with um, the changes that we talked about. Um, thank you. Yeah, great. Uh, all right, so on to the year end financial report. Um, okay, yeah, welcome, Kelly. No. It's hmm. weird. Uh, okay. It's safe here. Let me try that. Okay. All right. Well, that looks promising. I can just share this now. Yeah, that's perfect. Thank you everyone for your patience. Uh, Kelly Murphy, Finance Director. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started maybe. Well, God willing. Okay, I, I think we're good. Okay, um, so I'm gonna run through uh, where we uh, look to be finishing FY22 um, and provide you with a bit of good news. Um, we are, looking in most cases to be positive in all funds with the exception of two, um, which is really great. Uh, the other thing that I do want to note is the auditors have been on site and we are tracking the schedule. So I'm hopeful that we'll have audited financials to you in conjunction with the budget process. Um, and so you'll have those for deliberations. Um, and then I think really the thing to highlight with the auditors at this point is that no news is good news. Um, and so we're just going to Go with that for right now. Um, so just a few slides, I'll be brief. Um, so starting off, oh, I, ooh, let's try to see, there we go. All right, perfect. Can everybody still see this? I think so, hopefully. Um, great, I've got some nods, awesome. So what I wanna do is just kind of provide a high level overview, keep it really simple. Um, I'll get into the general fund in a minute and then provide an overview of the utilities and then the areas where funds are not performing as though we would have anticipated. Um, and so what you can see here, we'll get into the general fund next, but with water and sewer, they're both positive. And for similar reasons, we are seeing revenue downgrades still in these funds, but um, the balance of those downgrades is being made up with, you know, unexpensed lines and capital projects. Um, so there are projects to do. Um, so there's still a bit of pressure there, but the good news is that we're ending the year um, in a positive position and do have options in those funds. Um, next, just considering sticking with the utility theme here, um, parking is positive, um, which is really good news. Um, that was looking really scary um, for a bit there. So we're about 283 to the good at this point. Things could change a little bit, but I don't see any big changes coming down the line at this point. Um, and then the other thing I want to highlight on the slide are the senior center and district heat funds. Those are negative. Um, the senior center, unfortunately, the reason why that is negative in large part is because of their um, investments not coming in as they normally do, um, then market has taken a dip to about the tune of $120,000. Um, that's not great. However, they do have the fund balance to cover it. Um, and so the, their fund balance will go from 611 down to $448,000 with the total sum of the downs in that fund. The other thing that um, is not particularly positive, but I do think will rebound with some of the programming that's been coming in is their program fees. So their programs did not come in as budgeted, and that's about $73,000, $75,000 or so down um, from what we had budgeted. So we're keeping a close eye on that fund, but I, I do think we will see some positive movement. This one's just slow to return, um, and we'll keep working on that. Uh, District Heat is the same story that it has been. 
this is really representative of depreciation in the fund um, and that being booked accordingly. Um, so this is a little bit further down than it was in prior years. Um, last year, I think we were about 146,000 or so to the bad. So this is up a little bit, but down, if you know what I mean. Um, so it's not great, but it's not unexpected either. So I think that, you know, all in all, things are looking pretty good. Um, so then this next slide just really gets into a summary of uh, the general fund um, and where we're at, what we're looking at in terms of just key highlights within, um, you know, both revenues and expenditures. Um, we, uh, when we put together the deficit mitigation plan in 2021, we were seeing revenues really tank. Um, and so as you can see here, they have come back and come back really positive. So property tax, uh, all things within that category are up by about $30,000. The pilot, state and local, up by 453000 And then there are some other categories that are up that are interesting, um, the intergovernmental and miscellaneous categories. Um, and those have things like the COPS grant or um, the uh, Challenger Monument movement, those kinds of items that you know we are seeing in those categories. So they're not huge items, but they are um, really helping us on the bottom line. And then there are areas that I did want to point out that are not doing particularly well. Um, and within this group, it's really the permits and licensing. Um, and I'll get into that in the next slide um, because I really um, wanted to highlight the revenue side of the equation since in the general fund in particular and parking, that's where we were really taking the hits. We weren't necessarily having a problem with spending per se. Um, and then moving on into the expenditures here, um, you know, we have been able to weather the storm. We did see that revenues were coming in. And so, you know, we did end up spending over what we had budgeted to the tune of about 380000 but netted against revenues, we still ended up on the positive side of things. Um, and things that I do want to highlight, we've been doing um, some pretty good work in IT and in finance, but it's expensive. And you can see ups associated in those areas, at counterbalance, whether offsets in other areas within the general fund. And then there are other pressures within the police department and DPW. Um, but, you know, those are things that are to be expected. Um, we did have some increases in delayed um, maintenance within public works that, you know, we didn't purchase equipment on schedule. And so we had some maintenance costs or within the police department, there were um, some significant overtime costs in that department. And so that's been tracking with what we thought it would be. Um, so moving on to this next slide, I just put together a five-year trend for you to kind of pull out some of the areas that we thought were going to do poorly, which have actually done quite well. Um, so state pilot, uh, you can see how that's continued to trend up. Local options tax is back, um, which is really great. Um, so people are shopping here in the city. Um, building permits, I want to highlight because this is down. Um, so of all the things, this is the area where we really um, might want to look at that because, you know, if you look at 20, we were at $103,000 and then 21 was 54 and then 22 was 51 and some change. And so not great, but hopefully development will start to, start to return. The other thing I want to highlight is the COPS grant. You can see that um, it's a federal grant that we get. And um, it's we've we've got a lot in 22 compared to other years. And so that's really helped the police department in netting against some of their expenditures. And then parking, although not general fund, um, the, bless you, the general fund um, did end up supporting the parking fund because a lot of that uh, was related to operational costs. And so you can see the meter revenues returning and the ticket revenues returning. Um, and then just in the notes section here, I just wanted to highlight um, what we were facing in 21 as a downgrade that didn't come to pass, thankfully. Um, but, you know, with all this good news, you know, there's also, we'll get into a, a slide um, further down in the deck here where we're in good shape, but there are lots of pressures on the budget right now. And so um, we are positioned well to deal with 24's budget build. However, there will be things that we're gonna have to really consider um, as we move forward. Um, so this next slide is just something I wanted to put together for you because this is another um, area that and it's a little small, so I apologize for that. Um, sorry. <laughs> so um, without the ARPA funding that we received, we probably uh, 
would not be able to stand up in a way um, that we are able to. So um, on April 30th, just recently, we elected to do the standard allowance, which means that the $2.2 million that we're receiving in ARPA funding um, can be used in the most general uh, categorical sense. And so that's really positive. It tracks with what we have planned for phases one and two. One and two phases are related to the timing of the money. And so you can kind of see the plan maybe worked out there because it's kind of small and I can get um, more detail for folks if they need it, if they can't see it. Um, but then I want to jump down to just the the, the bullet for last well, next up from the bottom, um, just in terms of what we've received to date and what we've spent to date. And so um, we have received about almost $1.5 million. We're waiting on the second installment of the county funding, and that's $715,000. We haven't received that yet. I do anticipate that we'll see, receive that very soon um, from the state treasury. Um, and so we're, we're kind of bird-dogging that uh, bit of money. But um, we've spent 278000 or so so far uh, as part of phase one for equipment purchases, there are a lot of project costs that will start hitting um, this fund and coming online. Um, and then I just want to note that we have plenty of time with this funding. Um, we have until December 31st, 2024 to obligate and it has to be expended by December 31st, 2026. I do not think we'll have any problems spending this money, um, but, and we have to give it back if we don't. So I just want to highlight that um, but we have plans for it so um we're we're working on it um and so i just wanted to give everybody a briefing on where we're at with our arpa funding um and so this last slide is just key takeaways um the general fund is the good three hundred and thirty nine thousand dollars, or about two percent um if you're looking at it from a revenue and expenditure pers uh, perspective um, and so that's positive and seems like a lot, but it's not when you consider all the pressures that I've had listed here in this last bullet. Um, you know, we have a lot of pent up demand and pressure on our funds for um, a bunch of different things, projects, positions, equipment, um, health insurance is likely going to go up. It's on a calendar year basis. Um, we are looking at a potential double digit increase. Um, and so I'll brief you more on that once we know for sure. Um, and then we have some other operational expenses that we do see coming in higher than what we had budgeted, such as fuel, electric, sand, salt. So um, 23, coming out of 22, we've got some wind at our backs. 23 is going to be a year to watch for sure. And then 24 development is going to be interesting. Um, so that's um, kind of everything that I have um, to go over with you, um, positive news, um, but we do have our work cut out for us as we get on here. So thank you. Can we get these slides? Because that one in particular, I want to blow up and be able to see the numbers. Thank you. Sure. Here. I didn't. I just added them right. Okay. Just that's that's on me. I was late to the game <laughs> getting the slides out. <laughs> Download. Any questions? I just think it's very interesting that the word when you used interesting, I thought of the Asian. When the Asian tells you they wish you to have an interesting life, it's a curse. Oh, <laughs> so when you said 2024 is going to be interesting, I went, oh. Well, we'll, we'll is that what uh, you meant? Um, I, I hope not. <laughs> Thank you. That was very clear. And uh, it's good to know where we're at. It's encouraging to see that things are starting to bounce back in a way that we were hoping they would. Um, but thank you for this update. This was this was very helpful and very clear. Um, so I really welcome. appreciate that. And uh, yeah, look forward to talking more about FY24. Yes. Yeah. Yes, Jack. I just had one question. There's such a huge drop in the uh, in the building permit line. Uh, do you have a theory for what that is? Because my recollection is that we had a couple of years where we had big uh, receipts in building permits that were mostly us paying ourselves, mm -hmm. like us, like the city. This 
the city pay, paying public work or paying for uh, for building sure permits for the sewer plant. The two the, the years we had the couple hundred thousand dollars, those were largely city projects. And I think if you look at the big drop, it was during COVID, you know, people just weren't building as much or investing. Uh, and now it's starting to inch back a, a little bit as people are, are doing these things. But yes, we did, you know, we had hit actually, you know, over a stretch of time and I couldn't remember the exact years, but we, we had the transit center, we had um, the, the wastewater plant. There was, you know, the um, a Caledonia spirits building. There was the, the building Pat Malone's building out near the roundabout. You know, there were some fairly substantial buildings that come with huge plans reading uh, and building permit fees. And, um, you know, that, that just kind of stopped during COVID. So hope, you know, as we hope to see a rebound in, in activity. Thanks. You're welcome. Uh, Peter Kelman, go ahead. Um, I, I would just like to observe that if we want building permit uh, revenues to increase, one possibility is to do a little more enforcement. Uh, I'm sure we have all driven around town and seen a lot of home construction going on and no permit signs. I'm not saying we should, but I mean, I'm not saying we should do that, but that's uh, that's um, leaving money on the table, I'd say. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So I think we are up to a uh, uh, discussion around the process for... Uh, 203 Country Club Road. Um, am I turning that over to you? Okay. I think we provide you a memo. I don't really have much to add to that. I know people, there had been some interest in how we were going to do this. And after we approved the the project manager at the last meeting, we convened a session with our, our own communications person and our project leader team, Josh Jerome and, and Stephanie Haley Clark from uh, White and Bark and their team uh, to try to lay out a plan for how to have regular conversations and also have data and keep things moving. And um, you can see what they've proposed. So this was really just to see what they have, give any feedback, suggestions, comments. Uh, yes, Carrie, go ahead. Yeah, um, um, I am looking at the public engagement process and that there are three public meetings planned and then smaller stakeholder conversations. And that's great. I'm glad there's a variety of ways to get some input. Um, I, I just want to reiterate an encouragement to this group that they think about uh, really different ways of getting feedback from people other than you can write a letter or you can come to a Zoom meeting or you can come to a, a public meeting. Um, there are still just whole great swaths of people living in Montpelier who will never show up for something like that, who will never even hear about it. Um, but something like maybe, I, I don't know what it is, something much more creative, um, going to places where you you don't ex necessarily expect um, to be going to look for public response, but, you know, really trying to think outside the box. And, and then my second one is that it looks like all this public engagement part is really front ended. And I'm wondering if that's still the plan that they're really going to kind of try to get all that public input first and then do all the rest of the planning. Because my hope is that it would be much more integrated throughout the entire process. So as things were being suggested and changed as they were learning different things, then it would be, let's go back and see what the public thinks about this. And as new things so, come up. I yeah. can respond to that a little bit. I have, I have enough knowledge to be dangerous and we certainly can, can have the folks come back in at, at another meeting to update that. Typically, the idea is that the the heavy public engagement now will really define um, the uses and locations and those kinds of things. So the the master plan will be developed and then come back and get feedback. After that, you're starting getting into you know engineering design and those things. So there might be changes, but I I I think and Mike Miller would tell you this that you know at some point you have to say this is what we're we're doing and now we're we're keeping people informed as to what may need to change or what happened. But 
we can't suddenly get into a year and a half of design and spending all that money and say, you know what? We're now going to just move that whole building or something. So I think, you know, and, and I'm probably overstating what you're trying to get at. But the idea is to really get the the plan laid out, the drawing, the the concept, and and run that through the public as much as you can. And but then once you get there, then you got to say, this is what we're doing. If that, I, am I making myself clear? Is that oh, I is that what you were trying to get at? Maybe I'm misinterpreting what you're saying. I want to make sure I'm getting it right. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't be advocating for you know, a complete change no, of plan a year and a half from now, but um, but I think that there are an example that came up tonight was the question about hunting. Right. You know, I don't think that was on on, on the radar. Uh, and what else like that might right. come up? And then what about a year from now, as we've as hunting has been happening? We may have very different feelings about right. about that in a year, and that and people in the public may have a very different opinion about that after we've experienced yeah. it for a little while. This the same with if we end up going through with this lease to the hub, people could have very different ideas about what should happen with that space after that's up and running for a year. So I okay, I, that that's actually yeah. really helpful. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it's a good plan. Um, one thing I'd add is just maybe engaging the CAN network to the extent possible. We've invested in it. I've been knocking a lot of doors lately. You're, you're going to find people who don't access this information through the normal channels there. So uh, I know some neighborhoods are a little more effective than others there, but uh, good good opportunity to see what they can do and do some flyering for that, I think. Um, I'm going to go to Lauren and then Donna. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Um, I had brought it up last meeting as well, uh, but we had a meeting, I believe, after the last council meeting with the Social and Economic Justice Advisory Committee, who is very interested. Um, so there is um, some work happening looking at the outreach that was done through creative discourse for our developing our equity plan and lessons learned, and how can we ideally connect with the consultant and provide some um, input on what, I mean, I think a lot of it's captured here. I think the plan is good, but it's like, what does the small stakeholder, you know, are there affinity groups and other things, some best practices that we can try to bring to what that looks like. Um, and and I ideally be capturing kind of what we're doing, lessons learned from this process. So as we keep having public processes, we're continuing to improve and not trying to like reinvent the wheel every time we're doing one like how do we how do we do a really good public process how do we um you know what works and what doesn't in this one to engage um, populations that have often not been part of the process as um, other folks have just been talking about so um just would encourage that we have some venue for providing that feedback um to inform this and totally agree the kind of ongoing even if it's just informing people of, you know, what input was incorporated, what wasn't and why from the public, I think it's just good public process um, for the kind of ongoing outreach and, and engagement of folks. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. I um, just want to uh, echo some of that, that I, I like the idea of intentionally, particularly with the small stakeholder, small stakeholder groups, um, intentionally seeking out uh, groups, um, you know, BIPOC affinity groups uh, to to get input, I think would be really um, great. You know, LGBTQ uh, groups, et cetera, that just underrepresented um, affinity groups, I think would be um, wonderful to in intentionally uh, get input from. Donna, go ahead. One of the ways we got really incredible good input with the Maine and Barry Street study is we put a display in the hallway on election day mm -hmm. and we got multi ages. We got kids and we were encouraging kids and we had a map and we had post them notes and they could see the map of the property. And they were they were posting a lot of intersections, sidewalk problems, places they love to walk, places they don't want to. It, it was very informative. And I, I think both for the November election and town meeting day, you could yeah. bring in a, and you could advertise it so people could look for it. And a lot of kids come. I think more will even come if they know their opinion matters. I'm trying to think of, oh, yes, go ahead. I think all the suggestions I've heard have been really good. I'd like to see... Uh, See our contractor set up a, a tent at the farmer's market uh, on Saturdays as people come. And if they have a tent and a table and 
get to talk to people. That would be really good. Uh, the other thing I'm glad Donna brought up the downtown master plan idea because uh, one and our experience in that is that uh, I I fully grasp the idea of wanting to get a lot of public input as early in the process as possible so we know what direction we're going in. But it would be good to keep that in people's minds in some way because when we were doing the downtown master plan, we had some public meetings and there were a lot of people who were out at those meetings and there were a lot, a lot of good ideas shared. And then by the time we, uh, we get two or three or four years down the road where we're finally in a position to do some, implement some of the things that we talked about, we've had people coming to the meetings saying, well, what are you talking about with this Barry Street bike path? I never heard anything about this. Why don't we? Why aren't we doing anything about addressing uh, the Barry Street uh, Main Street intersection? We we did all this planning based on public input, and so if we could get a way to have people more more aware of what's going on as we progress, as we proceed, I think it would be a good thing. I might also suggest, just for density's sake, potentially uh, having something set up on like a hot day at the pool. <laughs> That'd be a different kind of uh, population. You know, go to where the people are, right? So, um, uh, Peter, Kellen, go ahead. Yeah, I, I'm really glad to hear all these uh, creative ideas. I would have liked to have seen them come from the uh, the consultant. And I really think that this needs to be sent back to them for some much more creative thinking and they should talk to Lauren and see Jack and they should talk to Donna uh, and Jack about past experiences. Um, I, I actually was quite disappointed to read this. Um, and I actually don't even understand. It sounds like uh, I, three meetings, all of which will do the same thing, but just in different places. If that's what it is, that's, that's inadequate. Um, I really think, uh, and Connor said to use CAN. I think that's very important. CAN does have reach into uh, sub neighborhoods, but I also would like to suggest something, uh, especially since uh, both um, Jennifer and, and uh, Carrie, who are my reps, um, have brought this up last week. I think each district should have a town meeting where where you bring in the consultants for these meetings that they talked about with the representatives from the district and really get some, you know, the kind of district feedback that um, it's, that's a different way to slice the pie. And it would also bring it, bring the city councilors closer to their constituents around this major project. Um, because can, which is important, is a good way to get information out it's not a great information to get bring information back, but I think a town meeting is a great opportunity. Um, and I, I will say again, I, I'm, I'm surprised this wasn't in it. I mean, um, the Habitat for Humanity did these great charrettes, which brought people in with, and we were looking at plans, we were commenting on them. We there was a great interaction, and um, also, by the way, uh, Bill. Both Habitat for Humanity and the Isabel Circle Project have made major changes. I mean, major changes in what they thought they were going to go with originally, partially from uh, uh, community feedback. So I'd be a little careful. I, th I think um, uh, Carrie's point was a good one. It's seems awfully front loaded. Like, oh yeah, we're gonna wrap this up by December and then we're gonna go off and get our architects. I don't think that's gonna work. It's real, and I think that that a, a number of people said, look, right, the, 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 if, if you do the contract with um, uh, the hub, we're gonna learn stuff. I'll be done in a minute, Donna, if we, uh, in exactly a minute. If, uh, if we're gonna learn stuff over this next year. I think this has to be much more flexible than your usual, uh, architectural process. Thank you. Thank you. And we will be providing all of this feedback to to them. So 
okay. watch the recording of this discussion. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> uh, all right, Emma Zavez, go ahead. Hi, thank you. Yes, um, Emma Zavez, I live at 3 Derby Drive. Um, so I just want to sort of echo what has been said a little bit about the proposal, which was that I found it very lackluster and boilerplate and sort of disappointing. Um, not sure how much we paid for it, but, um, you know, good public participation is is really going into the community. So um, setting up at the farmer's market, yeah, but also standing in the parking lot of Shaw's, going to the town pool, going to the soccer games, uh, standing out the corner <laughs> at the intersection downtown on a busy Saturday, uh, figuring out, you know, what populations, what groups, um, you know, you want to hear from, you want to hear from renters, you want to hear from homeowners, you want to hear from kids, you want to hear from hunters. You, I mean, really digging into who lives in this community, where do they go? Um, what are their interests and how do you reach them? Um, so I, I hope that some of that feedback will reach the consultant. <laughs> um, and I also, you know, they reference sort of all the public comments that have been collected so far. Um, I would love to, maybe that information is already online somewhere, but I would love to see a website, um, whether it's on the city's website or elsewhere, um, that talks about the property, that tells people sort of, okay, the purchase has been made. Here's a map, you know, here's what we're doing. Here's all the comments, you can read them. Here's how to submit more comments, um, you know, a way for folks to get engaged. Um, and then I think they mentioned the bridge, but obviously lots of folks are on Front Porch Forum, um, the CAN groups as well. So I think there's a lot of opportunity for, for input. Um, and I personally would love to read the comments. Um, I missed those meetings um, and I'm super interested in the project. Um, so I would love to get more involved. Thank you. Great. Um, I just wanna appreciate uh, that comment and thinking particularly about the website. Um, it's just reminding me of the Missoula website that Jay uh, pointed us to and uh, just having a, like a project portion of the website. Do you want to comment about that? We do have a, a, we do. a we link do. on our website dedicated to this project. I'd have to go look and see exactly what's on it, but I think there, I think the map's on there. I think the comments may be on there. It's on the city's website, so we can, uh, but we can make sure to make that more well known. Great. Uh, Jennifer, go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to um, say thank you, Emma, for your um, comments. And uh, she mentioned uh, from Porch Forum and you know, we get a lot of our information from Front Porch Forum, which is often people's opinions and sometimes not always facts. But I, I'm glad to know that those conversations or the public input is on a website somewhere. And so thank you, Emma, for bringing that up because I was not aware that, that um, the conversations were public um, already. But I think having it in a place that is not Front Porch Forum would probably be really helpful um, moving forward if it's not already taken care of. But it sounds like it already is so. Never mind. I'm just appreciating the comment. <laughs> Great. Other comments from folks, either in person or remote, um, or council. This is great. Thank you all. This is exactly what we were hoping to yeah. hear. And we will summarize this. And I let me. Um, and I think probably the easiest thing will be to send this. Um, section of this uh, discussion to our team and their team so that people can hear it firsthand um, and make adjustments because none of it is outside of the scope of things that we had thought about, but it's good to get some specific suggestions and keep them coming if people think of things. Do you think that we will get a revised version? Yeah, I, yeah, I think that would be helpful, especially, you know, to help encourage the participation, just knowing where, uh, or how they intend to to be out there and, uh, you know, the process along the way, et cetera, I think would be good. And I, I do want to um, just uh, uh, go back to Peter's comment. I uh, In terms of the design charrette, I sort of, uh, I guess it's not necessarily called out here, but I do sort of expect that that will be a part of the process, right? Like that there will be, maybe the architects aren't we, getting into site to allow yeah. for people to sort of walk around and talk about right. what they want. So yeah, I I yeah. I want yeah, I do want to be clear. I mean I think 
we expect there'll be sort of changes in the concept as it rolls along. I think once at some point the city council and the public need to say, this is the plan we're approving. And I think that's, that's maybe where I think I just misunderstood what you were asking is that, you know, and when, so when you say front load, whether it's nine months or a year, year and a half, but at some point we say, okay, you know, we've, we've tweaked it enough. Now this is what we're doing. And at that point, you know, then you start spending different kind of money and moving it along. And so we can't really, because sometimes, you know, in lots of communities, including ours, people still want to keep revisiting as, as Jack mentioned. And sometimes there is a lag between what's decided and the one get what's ultimately gets ruled out. And so I, I did appreciate the comment about sort of keep it in the public eye uh, in the meantime, after we sort of make a plan, you know, post it up all over the place and this is what's coming, you know, so. Uh. Great. Uh, Donna. I think our expectations are very high and perhaps we may need a group of volunteers who can add extra time to be out there and not just survey, but we could do interviews so that maybe the person doesn't feel comfortable during the survey, but we could have volunteers a team going out and filling out the same form for information, just that then we have more people in more directions stirring up thoughts that we might want to think about that. Well, I guess, yeah, I think all that's fair. I do think um, maybe, and I think we've already said this, and I'm just going to repeat it to say it out loud to, 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 for reality check here, but we are, we, I believe we've said that this project and, and we put it to the voters this way, that key elements of this project are sort of public recreation facilities and housing and open space. Um, and, you know, it was purchased with $2 million from the general fund, a million dollars from the rec fund. And so I do, I, th I think it, we do, those are certain sort of barriers we got to put around this, that it's not necessarily and and correct me if i'm wrong here that it's a blank slate it's how do we fit these kinds of things on what do they look like and what maybe do we do with the remaining space so i think that may have been where these folks were like how do we get to the i call them pods they're not really pods but the different pods on the project that um that reflect our, our wants so because um, because I do I do get concerned we could chase down any number of things that send us way off on onto areas that don't include those two at least major initiatives recreation and housing. So, uh, Donna, go ahead. I think, I think that's an excellent point, and that would be the thread. Like to have that statement at whatever you do, whether it's a meeting or survey is that we're educating ourselves again and again. These are our limitations. And around this, this is what we want to achieve. Okay. You don't need any motion from us, right? Um, so um, normally we don't let people go twice, but there's not a lot of folks here. So Emma, go ahead. <laughs> okay. Um, so my second time, uh, I am a member of the housing committee. Uh, first time I was speaking more as a resident. Um, so uh, as a member of the housing committee, we're just getting going. We've had a couple meetings. So we're, <laughs> the gears are starting to, you know, to roll. Um, but if there are ways that we can, um, you know, support this process in terms of volunteering, in terms of collecting feedback on housing issues. Um, let us know what you think, what you need. Um, again, we're just getting going and feeling out, uh, you know, capacity and priorities and all of those issues. But I know that folks are interested and excited about um, this project, you know, in the coming years and want to be involved. Um, so please consider us as a resource for sort of, um, as you said, one of those areas sort of framing discussion is housing. And so, yeah, please do reach out to us. Thank you. Thank you, Emma. And I can tell you that you are, your group is, is high on our list of people to be involved. Great. <laughs> um, certainly we would want to have anything dealing with housing um, had, you know, your comments and thoughts and input on and direction on, so. Wonderful. Okay, thank you. And we don't need a motion on that. So we're gonna um, carry on then. Um, so the next three items are uh, potentially items that we could 
go with for executive session. Uh, so we could do this a couple of ways. Um, one is if really we could have any comments that are public about all three items sort of together and then go into executive session to talk about these three items, or we could do them sort of one at a time and come out every time. Um, my Jack, do you have any thoughts on that? My thought is that uh, any one of these could take up a bunch of time. So this might, might be good time to take our break before we plunge into those. Okay. That is a good call. Um, so I had a suggestion yes. to you about this. Um, again, just a suggestion. My suggestion would be we do the, the public arts commission once we have a gentleman here mm -hmm. who'd like to hear the outcome of that and then maybe do all of our council reports and because we don't need voting action on the, others. on the others and then go in and do the others. Okay. So I, I, that sounds okay to me. And does that sound all right to yeah. you all? Yeah. We'll, we'll take a break and then we'll, we'll come back. And if there is, if, if there are any um, public um, comments about uh, about the public art commission, we'll we'll do that, and then we'll go into executive session. Come out um, after the, just that item, and then go back in to discuss the other two. Oh yes, council report. So the, yes, yes, thank you. That's that's right. Um, just checking. Yeah. That's true. We still have every, yep. the yep. cameras on because I don't think I don't think we're going to need voting action in the other two, so there would be no necessarily yeah. reason to keep. Um, folks here. Lauren and Jennifer, how do you feel about that plan? I'm fine with it. Okay. Uh, Donna. Well, just one thing before we break. I think that plan is great, but you know, today is your birthday <laughs> and we cannot get past before everybody goes to sleep. <laughs> I want to make sure everybody knows Ann Watson has a birthday oh, today. Okay. Well, thank you. <laughs> Yay, thanks. Yay, thanks. Um, right. So, um, <laughs> yes, if you wouldn't mind coming up to use this microphone. Um, yes. If I may, uh, the reason why I stayed uh you know through yeah. everything is not because i was awaiting you know some kind of official statement or something because actually i was enjoying auditing this class for a local government in action and i don't know if i'll be able to get any college credit for it but nonetheless <laughs> i found it very very interesting um so i can depart um, that way there's no like, well, he's waiting or, uh, but what I would like to do is I would like to leave you not only the printed copy of what I said, uh, earlier, but I'd also like to leave with you, um, these are the comments in the same way in which I came here tonight and I wrote down what I wanted to say. Because, you know, people who are not used to speaking in public, they go, um, now let's see. And then, or, and it gets kind of fuzzy, particularly for people who have to listen. So I wrote down, uh, I introduced myself and wrote down my comments to the Montpelier Public Art Commission as the, um, um, when I said, okay, the agenda, comments from the public. So I said, okay, I'm going to read what my comments are. And from this, um, you can determine what exactly was my tone and where I was coming from. This isn't everything because then there were some um, subsequent topics that were generated by virtue of what I said. So, but nonetheless, uh, I will leave uh these with you okay that you can either incorporate okay. or not thank you in your deliberation and uh i think if uh you administer a pop quiz on your local government in action i think i will ace it without <laughs> listening very attentive <laughs> good. So good thank night you all. yes good night thank you okay um jack the only question 
are we making Kelly stay because of one of the other items? It's not, I don't think. Okay. Because okay. if we were, I'd want to do that earlier too. No, I've got my, I've got my instructions from Kelly. Okay. Okay. Great. So here's what I, I'm, I would propose that we do is that we take a break, come back and do council reports, and then we'll go into executive session on all three of these things. Right. And then, right, and we don't really. Maybe. Because all if we do, we can we can take it for the minutes still. We can. Well, well, yeah, okay, go ahead. If we discuss the art commission issue and the first of our executive session, mm -hmm. we can mm -hmm. decide then to come back if we've made a decision we have to present. Could we not? I and sure. then we could go back in executive session, but otherwise. Right, but then we're asking everyone to stick around to wait and see. To see if, well. I mean, you can, so. No, we can come I, out I'm and. All for transparency and <laughs> you can still have an open public meeting, even if the camera's not on, right? It's, although I suppose if there's a Zoom meeting, we, I don't know how that all works. This is new frontier. Uh, I, maybe it's. <laughs> okay, if if that is okay with you, I think it's probably just cleaner if we take that up first, as you're suggesting. Just you're suggesting, and then we'll see if we do have an action. We'll come back. I'm sorry to make you stay. To and we'll come back either way to be like yes or no. <laughs> we have just you know something to say or we don't, um, and then we'll go back to discuss the other two. There you go. So everybody wins. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, okay. It is now 822. We're going to take a break till 832 and we'll do council reports then. All right. Thank you. Cool. Okay. It is 832. So we are going to get, uh, started again here. What's that? Oh, okay. Oh, and Lauren's back. That's great. Okay. So, um, we are going to jump in with council reports. And for this, I'm going to start over with Donna. Well, I think let's let's do council reports. And then if there are comments to be made in public, we can do that after. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Sorry about that. So, okay. Uh, um, I just want to remind, I want people to put it on their calendars that Vermont State Housing Conference will happen November 16th, and it's at the Hilton in Burlington, and, and hopefully it'll be a really significant gathering and some action groups will come out of it. Cool. Carrie. Okay. Uh, Connor. I'll just uh, reiterate, uh, thank you, I sent over email. I was driving down Main Street the other day, and I didn't have a coffee lid, and I didn't spill one drop of coffee on myself. The road was so smooth. <laughs> so thanks to DPW, city manager, staff, everybody who worked on uh, the road. So getting, getting some good feedback on that. Uh, also, I might have an issue coming to council from my day job, but I'll be recusing myself from it. And uh, my intern, Merrick Moden, will be uh, maybe presenting this. So I'll be keeping an eye out for Mo Merrick there. Okay, great. Uh, all right, I'm going to jump to uh, Jennifer um, with this virtually. Uh, Go ahead. I have nothing. Thank you. It's okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, Jack. I went up to uh, to Vermont the Health Department Clinic today to get my uh, bivalent uh, COVID booster and vaccine. And I just want to encourage everyone, We the Omicron uh, booster is now out and it's available free up at uh, at the UVM ophthalmology office across from the uh, airport. There are signs and I just encourage everyone to get it so that you're not the one who gets sick or infects someone else. Great. Thank you. Uh, Lauren, go ahead. I'm going to pass tonight. Thanks. Okay. Uh, I just have a few uh, events I want to make folks aware of this weekend uh, is a celebration of VPIRG's 50th 
uh, anniversary. Uh, so that's at uh, 5 p.m. Uh, up in Burlington. There's also a, um, a celebration of women in uh, in politics with Emerge also this weekend, um, Saturday. And then next Wednesday, there is uh, an opportunity to uh, testify on uh, the clean cars and clean trucks rules that the state is considering. Um, that's at the um, public library in Barrie. Um, so just so some things uh, coming up soon. Um, and that is it for me, uh, John. Um, oh, well, since you brought it up, I'll mention that we did have a, uh, a, a citizen requested recount of the 2020 uh, presidential ballots. Um, from just concerned citizens about the results of the 2020 election. Everything went fine. It was all very pleasant. The numbers came out consistent with the numbers. And there you go. Great. That's good. Bill. Um, I actually have a few things. Uh, let's see where to start. So Connor mentioned a few of them. We had a homelessness task force meeting today, and we've already addressed the, the committee, um, so just a, a few more updates that I think are, are probably important. One is we are moving forward uh, on a shelter. Uh, looks like there's a provider, looks like there's a location and uh, trying to get funding from the state. Um, it's possible that there might be a match fund and they may be seeking for the city to contribute some of that match. But the, I th it's my opinion that the total that they're talking about any match would be within something we could do and certainly very important to provide an over or overflow shelter. But that, that would come back to you. Um, I was going to mention this anyway, Donna kind of brought that up about dealing with pallets and those kind of things. We actually, so Connor mentioned the RFP uh, contract, which you approved has been issued to um, a group to look at those kinds of strategies and come back with specific recommendations for what, you know, do, should we have pallets? Should we have a, a, a facility? So that work is actually being done and we will be getting recommendations for the type of programs and facilities and as you recall, we have 425,000 in ARPA funds set aside sort of for that kind of work. We didn't identify it specifically. So we will see what comes from that um, so that some of that is being studied. Uh, as Connor mentioned, there is a group that is going to propose uh, some sort of uh, reintroduction of the Girton Park structure for the wintertime, feeling it provides a safe shelter for some people. Um, so we can expect to hear that. Um, I think most importantly, and I, I just want to mention this, is that this, the state has issued an announcement, and I meant to bring their formal announcement, but they, they're running out of money, uh, federal money for their programs, and uh, they are going to be, uh, there will be drastic impacts to that. By March, they're gonna, they expect to be uh, primarily ending the hotel motel programs, which means in uh, Washington County alone, it's about 300 people that are housed. So those uh, some of them will still be eligible for hotels under certain circumstances if they have little kids, if they are over, you know. So, but a very large portion of those people will then be out um, at the end of March with, unless unless other funding is provided or other options are provided, uh, with no place to go. So our communities in Central Vermont could see um, a, a very drastic, visible um, change in in the effects of homelessness on us. So. Uh, today's meeting, uh, we had folks from Barry on and they're trying to talk about how to work with them, but uh, certainly I, I just, I'm flagging this for the council and the community that this is uh, an issue that is not getting better, it's getting worse and it's gonna become, uh, you know, really moving into crisis mode, uh, possibly by spring, late spring. So I don't think I missed anything else from today. Um, but I thought it was important, um, in a, in a, a small little self-promotion, uh, I'm actually be heading off to the ICMA conference. We'll be beginning my third year as ICMA vice president. It's hard to believe it's already there. Um, but more importantly, I'm going to be the chair of the committee on professional conduct. So that means all ethical cases having to do with ethics and city government will be under my watch so what <laughs> i don't know whose idea that was but <laughs> so there we go um yeah so when you hear about how unethical i am you'll know um let's see there was that uh personnel matters we 
hope to have an announcement, expect to have an announcement on the building inspector this week. We, we believe we have a candidate who's accepted the position. We just want to cross T's dot the I's before we make an announcement, but we think we have a very qualified candidate. Um, uh, I would like to publicly say thank you to Donna Barlow Casey for all she contributed to our uh, public works department and her creativity or innovation, her just general good person spiritedness. And uh, she's going off to retire. And Kurt, so as of today, I named Kurt as the uh, acting director. Uh, as, and we will begin a process to look for that. Uh, speaking of processes, the deadline for assistant city manager was today. And we had 17 applicants. So we'll be uh, moving that forward. Which brings me to the, as we're talking about assistant city manager, brings me to my last item, which is that this is Cameron's last meeting with us. Um, she'll be here till next Thursday, but this will be the last time you see her in an official role. She may be here as a complaining citizen who knows where all the bodies are buried. <laughs> um, but um, I just like to publicly thank her for everything she did for our organizations, our strategic planning, our uh, many of our internal systems that you don't know, uh, getting this homelessness task force kicked off, putting up with all the controversy around the camping policy, um, a, a million things on the inside, anything she was ever asked to do or she did and then volunteered to do even more. Um, an amazingly dedicated, incredible person, and I hope she finds her bliss uh, and thank you for everything. It's just been a daily joy, even when we were screaming at each other. <laughs> There's no screaming. <laughs> we sure can. So grateful for you. Yeah, thank you for everything you've done here with the city. Oh my gosh. Sorry, I didn't process that the, to today was your last meeting with us. Oh my gosh. Oh. Unless you have a special meeting between now and Thursday. Well, we could, <laughs> we could put one together. In which case, uh, he'll be there. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, and um, also please pass along to Donna our gratitude um, for all of her work with the city um, and uh, just congratulations on, on retirement and so grateful for her um, time and service uh, with us. So, Excellent career service. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Great. Okay. Um, all right. So at this point, looking at let, let's let's just go through potentially public comments about any of the, the three items. So starting uh, with the hub lease, is there anything that we want to say in public about um, the hub lease? Well, I will. I can report that um, you know at the last meeting, the council uh, approved. A negotiation of the house lease of the uh, of a lease for three years with the hub. I've had conversations with them, and we have reached agreement on a lot of items. And have a couple items that I need to review with the council and see where they're at. So that's the purpose of this executive session. Anything else anybody would like to say, either in person or online? Okay. Uh, all right, on the Public Art Commission uh, composition uh, meeting, anything folks would like to say in public about that? And either with us in person or online. Okay, uh, and so moving on to the collective bargaining update, anything anybody would like to say in public about that? Well, I'll just say that... Um... It's been no secret that we've got a, a real uh, problem with vacancies, particularly in public works and police, and it's hampering our ability to do our job. So we've been in conversations with employees in that those departments about ways to potentially uh, solve some of the vacancy issues, and I'd like to review some of those with the city council. Because and it's because they are in the, the context of a collective bargaining agreements and would require ultimately would require actual negotiation and, a, you know, a signed amendment to agreements. Okay. Um, anything else about that? Okay. I'm not seeing anyone. So um, with that said, is there a 
Motion to go into executive session. So oh, yes. Okay. Is that some of the motions require different okay. motions than others, but probably if you do the premature public, then that would cover all of them. It's We're coming. This oh, one is well, just for the Public Art Commission, right? So, um, was there a motion about that? Yes, Jack. We will enter it into executive session to discuss uh, the uh, composition of the Public Arts Commission pursuant to 1 VSA Section 313A 3 and 4 uh, relating to appointment employment or evaluation of a public officer or employee or a dismissal disciplinary or dismissal action against a public officer or employee. Very second. Second. Okay. Further discussion. Okay. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. And opposed. Okay. So that motion passes. Uh, so we don't need to do any roll call and we will go into executive session about just that item and we will come back out to even if we don't have a, um, you know, something to announce. So, uh, cool. And someone will bring the computer in for. Yes. Of members Hurl and Morton. Yes, but we are we will change to the executive session link. Okay, cool. Thank you, and we'll see you in a bit. Okay. Uh all right. So is there a motion to come out of executive session? Uh all in favor, please say aye. I second. Oh, second. Is there a second? There's a second. second. Okay. A second. Okay. Thank you. Uh, all right. All in favor. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed. Okay. So that was unanimous. So we are back in public session. And is there a motion? Jack, go ahead. I move that uh, the council take the following steps. One, place the uh, member in question, Tom Mulholland on administrative leave to refer the uh, issue that was uh, discussed in executive session to the uh, community justice center for in the hopes of uh, reaching a resolution and three if a uh, resolution is not uh, reached that the this would come back to the council for uh, fact finding and action based on our determination second and just to clarify, by administrative leave, you mean like leave from the committee? Oh. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Clarifying question. Nope. Hey, you're all good. Okay. My, my question is going to be: You said it would come back to the council for fact finding, or do you? The council wants to authorize the manager to proceed with fact finding. If it's if. if before the next council meeting, we determine that there won't be a CJC resolution. Do you want to just move forward or do you want to wait and consider this? I, I would authorize the, the manager to engage in a fact finding process and report to the council. That's that's what you meant, right? Okay. And that's what Second you're okay. Okay. Yeah. John, is that right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. Further discussion? Okay. Um, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Okay. And opposed? All right. So that's unanimous. Um, thank you. And so the next two items, um, I think we need some two motions for at least what well, for for one of them. Um, I was yeah, I was to say for probably for both of them. Okay, um, is there a motion about going into executive session uh, about the need to go into executive session? Jack, go ahead. Should, should I do one for both uh, items on? I the think agenda? we can. Yeah. I I move that. Uh... The council that make a finding that premature general public knowledge will clearly place the public body at a substantial disadvantage regarding contracts, labor relations, agreements with employees. And that's it. Okay. 
Any further discussion? Okay, all in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed? Okay, and Jack, aye. go ahead. I move we enter executive session to discuss the issues relating to the lease of the uh, building at 203 Country Cup Club Road and uh, the issue about uh, collective bargaining agreements with the uh, city employees. Okay, further discussion? All, all in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed? Okay, so that is unanimous. We're going to go into executive session, and we don't anticipate coming out to make any further motions except to adjourn. So, yeah, FYI. Cool. Thank you. Onward. <laughs>